Finally, a word about optimizations that and what the impact of those is going to be on how we get addresses of different uh, variables, right? Now, the goal of compiler optimizations, there are a few different goals that a compiler has to satisfy. One of them is it has to maintain correctness of the code, right? So, in other words, if I have a certain code and I have a certain understanding of how it is supposed to work, the compiler should guarantee that that correctness is maintained. It does not change the meaning of my code at any point. But subject to correctness, there are a couple of other metrics, not couple, there could be many different metrics that it tries to optimize. The two most common and popular ones are the speed of the program, how fast does the program run. The other could be the size of the program, how, how much space, how much memory does the program occupy. Okay? Apart from that, there are other kinds of metrics which could include things like how many times does it access memory, how much power does it consume, right? which are a bit harder to quantify but can be relevant in different contexts. Okay? And one of the things that a compiler generally tries to do is that it tries to eliminate unnecessary code that is present. Okay? And what that in turn means is that we would like to avoid unnecessary read or write operations. Right? And an example of an unnecessary read or write operation would be, at least to sort of make the point over here, let us say that I have a for loop and I have for i is equal to 0, i less than 10, i plus plus and I am doing something with i. Do I really need to have a memory location corresponding to i or should I just try and store i somewhere in a register and be done with it? Okay. This is an interesting question. It is not very obvious what the answer is and in fact, let us in order to you know understand exactly what is happening here, it sometimes makes sense to go for to go and look at what kind of assembly language gets generated by a compiler when you write code like this, right? And in terms of understanding the assembly language, this particular website, godbolt.org, which is basically run by a person named Michael Godbolt, hence the name of the website, it is called a compiler explorer, right? And what it allows you to do is that you can write code and it pretty much compiles on the fly and shows you what would be the generated output. Okay? In this case, what I have done is I have written a very simple function with a for loop out here for i is equal to 0, i less than 10, i plus plus and something that prints the address of i. Okay? And what this basically says is I have also compiled it for a RISC-V architecture simply because the output instructions that you get as a result of the RISC-V architecture are a little easier to interpret. Right? You could do it with x86 provided that you understand x86 assembly language, but RISC-V is a little easier to sort of explain, so I am going with that. The interesting thing is you can see the color coding, right? So you have this yellow color out here for int i is equal to 0 and it pretty much shows you the i equal to 0 when I put my mouse over the i equal to 0 part, you can see that there is another part on the other side of the screen that lights up in red. Okay? So, the i equal to 0, you can see on the right hand side that the SW0, comma minus 20 of S0 lights up and similarly, when I go over that, right, I find that this essentially shows me on the left hand side, the i becomes highlighted in red. What this is effectively telling me is, SW stands for store word and what this is saying and this minus 20 of S0 says, take the register S0 use it as a pointer into memory, but after subtracting 20 from it. Okay, so, take whatever is the content of S0, it is a number, it is a pointer, it is a address of a memory location. Subtract 20 from it, that is another memory location and store the value 0 there. Okay. So, what you can interpret from this is S0 seems to be the name of some register present inside the system which is being used in order to point to the stack frame corresponding to this function. And what this is saying is subtract 20 from that stack frame 
and into that location put the value 0. What does that mean? The address corresponding to i is this s0 content minus 20. Now the problem is we do not know what s0 is even though the you know the website shows you some numbers those are not the actual addresses. Those addresses will be known only when we run the program not before that right. So I cannot really show you what value s0 is going to take. But on the other hand, what it does tell me is that there is a memory location corresponding to i. And what that means in turn is that I can actually take and i and pass it to the printf function, right. And let us look a bit closer out here. What you can see is that I can basically take this address from minus 20 of s0 put it into a5 that so a5 basically has the value i at this point take the number s0 minus 20 right that is what this add immediate says it takes the register s0 adds minus 20 to it and stores it into the register a4 it then does you know this was probably unnecessary it calculated something in a5 and then moved it into a1 it calculated something in a4 and then moved it into a2. The reason for doing that is a1 and a2 are being used as arguments for this printf function. Okay. Long and short of it, you do not need to worry too much about it. What is important is this a4 was basically getting me the actual address of i, which I know because I saw this part of the code which told me that the address of i was s0 minus 20. Okay. So, this assembly language in other words also gives you a much clearer picture of what these pointers are doing. They are literally looking at numbers and manipulating them as addresses, right. The interesting thing over here actually is this small piece of code, right, which corresponds to the part where we are trying to perform the for loop, the condition check, right. what you can see is I take the value from um, yeah as you can see over here right. This part over here is taking the value from minus 20 of s0 which we know is the address of i putting it into the register a5. The next line over here is basically doing i is equal to i plus 1 right that is part of the for loop that you can see on the left hand side right. And then what does it do? It stores that value back into the memory. It has to because otherwise i has not got updated. But then look at the very next line of code, it once again loads that value back into a4. If you look at these two lines of code right line 21 and then line 23, why would I take a value from a5? store it into a memory location and in the very next instruction load that value back from memory into a4 right. This is required because this is literally what the code is asking you to do. i is a location in memory, I need to increment the value in i, so I need this store word. But then I also need to check whether i is less than 10, so I need to load it back right. This is an example of unoptimized code. In this case, right, what has happened is I store something and then I immediately load it back. A compiler which has had more optimizations turned on at this point would basically get rid of one of these instructions and say, look, I do not need to load it back. I know that it is already there in the register A5. I can just use it, right. And I would directly compare it against 9, right. Well, no, in this case, I would, yeah. What is ending up happening is it is loading 9 into the register a5 and then comparing a4 against a5. Instead, I would probably have done it slightly differently, put the value 9 into another register and compared a5 against another register, right, should have achieved exactly the same result. The reason why something like this happens is because the compiler is not being very smart about it. It just literally takes each line of code that you have and puts a template code corresponding to it into the generated output. But once you turn on optimizations, it will actually look at these and eliminate some of these redundancies, right. In particular, if I was not really looking for the address of i, 
it's actually possible that it would eliminate storing i into memory at all and treat it completely as something that sits only in the registers of the program because there's no way that a person outside would ever know whether this corresponded to a memory location or only something inside a register. So compiler optimizations in other words can result in certain variables being usable in your program but not even having an address corresponding to them. The problem is the moment you ask for the address by using the ampersand operation the compiler assumes that you actually want that address it forces it to store something in an external memory location and can actually end up making your program slower than you would otherwise want. Not only that this could potentially even conflict with certain hardware requirements and the, what you need to understand over there is as we discussed earlier when we were talking about an overall computer structure, an organization of a computer, apart from having programs and data sitting in certain parts of the memory, you would also have some parts of that memory space, that is the memory addresses allocated to certain peripherals. What that means is if the CPU tries to access one of those locations, it would actually end up trying to read or write data not from a memory location but directly from an external maybe a sensor like a temperature sensor or a water level sensor or it might end up writing data into an actuator maybe a motor or something to turn on or off a light right. So those kind of things can potentially happen even for those pointers are very useful because you still want to have a direct way of accessing a particular memory address even though it does not correspond to a physical memory location. We use the same approach in that context as well, right. There you have to be a little careful about what the compiler does and how it sort of you know tries to optimize the code that you have because in particular if the compiler decides that it does not actually need a memory location corresponding to this and it can store something in a register that might end up giving you the wrong result then what would actually happen if you wanted to directly access a location in the external memory space corresponding to a peripheral right. When we get to how and there, there will be contexts especially when you are dealing with embedded C programming where this becomes relevant. For the time being it is not so much uh, of a concern for us for most practical C programs that we will write. So I will just mention it and we may not be using much more of it in the immediate assignments or the pro uh, programming that we will be writing at this point.